Hey there. So this is just a quick little overview on how live looping on the black box works. So first of all, this is version uh, 3.0.9 is what I'm currently on. Um, you definitely want to be on the version 3.0 or later firmware uh, for this particular workflow because some of the MIDI mappings have changed uh, compared to previous firmware versions. So make sure you're on version 3.0 or newer. And also you're gonna to want to reference the, um, the version 3.0 or whatever the, the latest version of the manual is because the manual has these various MIDI mappings that you want to find. And again, those have changed. Make sure you're looking at the most recent version of the manual uh, because if you just Google it online, you're going to find the older versions. You got to go through the forms to get the, the correct one. So first off, in the MIDI settings here, I just have my global in set to Omni, meaning it's listening on all channels. You can also have it set to whatever channel your MIDI controller is sending. Either way will work. Um, you also need to have this pad record turned on. Uh, you can think of pad record as basically the live looping function or you know one key part of it. So that has to be on, otherwise this whole system doesn't work. The rest of these settings I'm pretty sure don't matter in terms of what we're doing here. So when you're in here, um, one thing that you're gonna want to do first is you're gonna go in and make sure that you're set to record input on uh, you know the actual inputs. So in this case, I'm recording stereo, so I have left or right. You can also uh, record mono, just left, just right, whichever you want. And then for gain, let's get some levels here. Looks like I could just have mine right at zero. I've got this turned all the way up to max. Um, record to play, this is definitely key for the live looping thing. That means as soon as the recording stops, it's going to immediately start playing whatever you just recorded. So that's probably what you want. Now the length here, um, of course it's optional. Uh, the, the kind of standard way to set up live looping is to have some specified length uh, so that you kind of always know how much time you're recording into. Um, and you can set this to be whatever you want, up to 128 bars. Um, you can also have it be custom. So if you want the style where you hit start and then you hit stop again, uh, so that each of your live loops uh, or each of your loops is slightly different in timing, you can do that. Um, but I think definitely one of the strengths is that it can preset the length for you. So I'm just gonna stick with four bars here. And then as for these, yeah, the threshold, um, you can see my my noise floor here is about negative 57, so I'll just set my threshold a little bit higher, uh, like negative 56, maybe a little, 45, somewhere in there is fine. Okay, so this all should be fine. Record monitoring on, you also definitely want that, otherwise you can't hear yourself play un unless you're recording. Okay, so with those settings set, um, I believe that's all you need to do. Now there's other things you might want to do in advance. So like, for example, you could apply effects to pads in advance. Um, you know, if you want it to have reverb and delay and stuff like that, uh, you know that you want to play into those effects, you can do that. I'm gonna leave that off right now just to keep it more simple, but just to point that out, you can do your, your effects. And I think you can even do EQ, uh, you know, in advance if you want to. So the uh, doing the EQ in advance could be especially helpful if you're trying to do like a um, you know, like a bandpass filter type thing or a, a low cut or parametric EQ or something where you want it to you want it, your loops to only play within a certain frequency range and not cover the whole spectrum. That could be really helpful if you're planning to do this alongside other instruments. Right? Okay, so for my sound source here, I'm using the Volca FM2, um, but the idea here is that this could be literally anything. This thing you know looks cool and it fits in the shot well, but like this could be a guitar. It could be um, a, you know, a bigger synth, it could be a microphone, it could be uh, you know, something with pickups, uh, it could be a kalimba, like I mean, whatever it is you want, anything that you can feed into your input here, including an entire mixer full of inputs of other instruments, right? So you could have a whole ton of stuff, uh, an entire band's worth of instruments, all plugged into a mixer, the output of the mixer going into the black box, and you could be looping from that. So don't think you have to limit yourself to just one little synth. Um, that's kind of, you know, just, just what I'm using for demonstration here. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a MIDI controller in which you can specify the MIDI note value sent from each something. Now, in this case, I have a pad controller, right? So I'm using pads, uh, but this could also be a keyboard. Um, this could be kind of whatever you want. 
Um, the only thing is you have to be able to choose the MIDI note values sent from each pad or key or button or whatever it is you're using. Uh, so also like if you're say a guitarist and your hands are busy, think about something like a MIDI foot controller, right? Basically all you need is at least four or maybe five different MIDI note values that you can send. So the way I have this one set up here is I'm using these four and then this one over here. I skip some, I give myself a little bit of a space and I'll show you why. Um, so this is a particular like setup that I find simpler because I only have to think about a couple things. And so the these two right here are the easiest, right? These are just going through my pads. I just use them to select which pad I want, okay? And so, if, and really you don't have to go both directions, right? I could just cycle all the way through. So like, let's say you were working with a MIDI foot controller, you only had four pedals to use, just make one of them be, you know, next pad and then cycle all the way through. You don't necessarily need two here. Now, uh, this one is just play pause. You can see currently that pad's blank, so it's not doing anything, but you see it turns blue. That means if there was something in it, it would play. Um, and then you tap it again to stop. Uh, and then this one over here is clear, which currently I don't have anything in there, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then the most important here, bottom right, is record. So now, there, this is kind of, in my opinion, the, the simpler, easier way of doing live looping, where you're just using these four or five controls, and all the rest of these I could ignore, right? Now, if you instead have a MIDI controller that's more like this, where you've got 16 pads that are laid out in the same arrangement as the 16 pads in the black box, there's another mode where you can have each one of these be a dedicated record stop recording uh, you know, button for that particular pad. Now I've tried that too, and for me, that's just kind of a bit more mental energy. It's actually like harder. It seems like it would be easier because you have a dedicated pad per pad, right? You know, a dedicated control per pad. But for me, I've just found it harder because I kind of have to think about like, oh, I'm here, okay, I need this one now, and then I need this one. Whereas with this setup, all I'm thinking about is like, Okay, I'm done here, next, done here, next, done here, next, right? I don't really have to think about which slot I'm in. So feel free to try both setups, of course, but in my opinion, this is kind of the simpler one. So um, let's actually start recording something so I can show you this a little better. So I'm just gonna go through presets on here and just kind of play random stuff. It's not gonna sound amazing, I'm sure. Um, also notice I'm not using any sort of MIDI or clock sync uh, because again, it doesn't particularly matter for this. I'm not you know, triggering anything from the black box. All I'm doing is using the black box to record into and loop. So let's go ahead and do something here. Oh, I failed. Okay, so we know how it's playing now. And if you noticed on that screen, it was counting up um, until it hit the fourth measure of the fourth bar, right? Because I had in here uh, this set to, if I go to the next one, I had it set to four bars, right? So of course you can change that per pad. Let's stop that here. Um, so you can change that per pad. So by default, to keep this simple, I'm just gonna do the same four bars on every single pad. But keep in mind that every pad, you can customize what you want that recording length to be. And again, you can do it in advance, right? You don't have to do it on the fly. So I could say maybe all my lowest row are all four bars, then I go to eight bars, then 16 bars, you know, something like that, right? So that as you're working through the song, you kind of give yourself like, oh, here's my rhythm section where it's going to be a little quicker loops. And then by the time I'm up here at the end, these are my more melodic loops where I want time to jam and meander around and stuff like that, right? So think about that as you're going through. Now, let's say I'm like, okay, I recorded that. I don't really like it. This is where this clear button comes in. Boop, I clear it. Now, all that does is it clears the pad. It doesn't actually delete the recording. So if I go here into load, and then um, all of these are saved into this presets folder. You load that, and then you go to whatever preset you have. Uh, I have named this Nanopad 2 Live Loop. You load that. Here's all these recordings I've made. I did a bunch earlier. Um, you know, one of these, whatever the highest number is, that one I just did. That one, I think. Yeah, it's that one. So the recording's still in here. So even when you clear the pad, like if you clear it accidentally, you haven't lost your recording. But you can see that in order to load the recording again through the menus, it takes a bit of time, is maybe a little harder to do on the fly. So that's kind of why I gave myself some space with this clear button. I didn't want it right next to these because I just didn't want to hit it accidentally. So let's do, uh, let's try to do something. Let me f first find, 
Let me find like more of a yeah base thing to start with. Start with this. Okay. Oh, there is also a metronome if you want to use it. I'm choosing not to use it, so. Okay, it's a fine place to start. Next, let's choose a different preset. So here, I'm not recording. I can preview my sounds. That's because I have that record on, or that uh, record monitoring turned on. So like, just to demonstrate, if I went in here and I turned off this record monitoring, see now I can't hear what I'm playing, even though you can see the, the input coming in, I can't hear it. So let's turn that back on. Okay. Now notice I sustained my note past the end of the loop there. So if I look here, there is an abrupt cut, right? Because it ends right at that spot. It's not going to hang out and wait for the tail on that. So you as the performer have to kind of plan ahead. In this case, it sounds okay. But if you're not careful about it, you might get a click or a pop or something where, you know, your volume drops to zero and back up. That's part of the, the practice it takes to get live looping going. Now let's find something else. So I can keep going like this, and I could just fill up all 16 pads if I want. Um, but also keep in mind, while you're going, while you're performing, when you have these little arrows, you can go through here, and then you can also play pause things, right? So I'm like, maybe I want to turn that one off. Because the play pause is just like a toggle switch, basically. So I can go through and I can kind of like make it sparser if I want, right? Turning certain things on. bring certain things back. And I'll 
also notice I can use this play pause to kind of change where they sync up, right? Each one is four bars in length, but doesn't mean that they all start at the same time. Add a few more layers. Also continue to edit things, right? So here at the beginning of this one, let me turn some of these off so you can hear a little better. This most recent one, the very beginning, is a little abrupt. I watch it come around again. It just immediately stops right there. So I'm gonna go in here, change my Attack a bit on my sample. My clip. Even after you record, you can still mess with it in here. I get to the end here, right? I'm out of slots, but I want to keep going. Well, don't forget about resampling. What if we resample this whole thing? Let's get 16 bars. Well, let's just get let's get eight bars of it. There's 
my whole thing. And now let's go through and clear them. So I got more slots to play into. Now keep going. Sample. Not what I wanted. Clear. Change it. Hopefully that's a good enough introduction to how this might work and spawns some ideas as to how you might use it. That's uh, the entire point of this video. And that's it. That's all I got. Okay, cool. See ya.